Greetings, fellow epistemophiles. Ooh, did you like that? That's my new word, epistemophile. It means a person who loves learning. And that's you, because you're here. And that's what we do here. We learn new things. One of, uh, one of my subscribers, Roger Wise, uh, asked a question. He wants to know, how do you calculate a, the back focus for your telescope? So what we first have to discuss is what, what is back focus. So if you want to hook a camera up to a telescope, you can't just attach it right to the telescope. You need to put a certain amount of space between the camera's sensor and the back of the telescope. Um, this is called your, your back focus. If you don't do this, then you could have trouble achieving focus or it can cause some distortions in your stars and stuff, especially on the peripheral of your, your image. So the question as to how much back focus do I need is completely dependent on your telescope. So the, this is something that you can probably look up in the user manual. If you don't have your user manual or if it's not in there for some reason, then a quick Google search will give you the answer. Just Google uh, whatever your telescope is like Celestron C8 back focus and it'll tell you what it is. With one of the telescopes I have, the Celestron C8, I can uh, either attach my camera uh, to the telescope or I can add a reducer between the camera and the telescope. The reducer will give me a wider field of view but it also changes my back focus value. So for example with my telescope with the reducer I need to add 105 millimeters worth of extra space between the back of this reducer and my um, camera's sensor. So the next question then is how do I add all that extra space? So you can get a whole bunch of these little rings. These are just little spacer rings and you can screw them all together to um, achieve whatever value you need. And they come in all different kinds of sizes so you can get the exact combination uh, that you need for your specific uh, back focus. Now, if that's all we had to do is just put a bunch of tubes in between our, our camera and the telescope, then this video would be over already. But what you probably want to do is you probably want to put a few accessories in the uh, image train. So you might want to use something like this, a, a filter drawer. So you can put a little filter in this drawer and slide it in and, and you can um, do narrow band imagery or you could just uh, do some light pollution filtering or, or whatever. Um, so a filter drawer is something you might want. Uh, you might also want to put something like this. This is a camera rotator. You attach your camera to this. You can loosen these little knobs and then rotate the camera to get the framing that you want. So when you start adding all these different accessories, you still need to hit that target value, but now you've got um, all these other parts that you need to account for, and they're all taking up space. So at, at first, this just seems like simple addition and subtraction, but it really started to make my head spin because I had so many different accessories. And for example, for one shot, maybe I want to use my off-axis guider, but then the next night, maybe I don't want to use that. And maybe one night I want to use the filter drawer and another night I don't. And so there's all these different combinations of accessories that I put in there. And every time I change a part, I now have to account for, for that width. And I only have so many parts, so trying to find the right combination to make it work so that I don't have to buy a bunch of other things, uh, that was kind of my goal. So I decided to make a spreadsheet to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna put a link to this spreadsheet in the video description. It's just a, a, a Google, Google Doc spreadsheet. When you click the link, you won't be able to edit the spreadsheet. You'll need to make a copy first. So just go up to the file menu, select make a copy. Um, that's your copy, you can do whatever you want with it. So the way this works is uh, you've got this, this field right here for your target back focus. So that's the value that you looked up for your particular telescope. Uh, as I had mentioned before with my reducer, I need to hit a target of 105 millimeters. So I'm gonna t enter that first in my target back focus box. Now in these fields, I'm gonna start listing all the accessories that I have. And I've got two different um, lists here. I've got the, the list for my M48 parts and my M42 parts. So let's talk about what that means. What's an M48, what's an M42? That refers to the diameter of the part. So here you can see I've got two different spacer rings 
And if you look at these, they're the, they're the same amount of back focus. These each will add 20 millimeters. But if I look at the diameter of these, you can see that one of them is fatter than the other one right there like that. So the uh, larger one, that's an M48, and the smaller one is an M42. Now there are other sized rings as well, so depending on your telescope, you may need to, to use different sizes and feel free to modify the, the table uh, accordingly. Um, but for all of my telescopes, it seems like they all use M48 and M42. Now when I attach my uh, reducer here, the threads on the back of the reducer, they are neither M48 or 42. I can't attach this, so I have to add this extra little adapter ring. This is an SCT to M48 adapter ring. It just screws on the back of this guy and now I have an M48 that I can start attaching my regular tubes to. This adapter ring adds 1.5 millimeters. So when I start adding all of my accessories in, in the list here, um, I must also list the amount of space that that part adds. So for example, let's just do the first one here together. I'm going to say that this is an SCT to M48 adapter. And it takes up 1.5 millimeters of back focus. So what you want to do now is you want to go through all of your accessories. Whether you plan on using them or not, add them all to the table. This will allow you to see at a glance all the parts that you have and all the sizes that they take up. And that will help you uh, come up with a combination that will get you to the number you want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just start filling in um, the table with all the, the different parts that I have. I have a spacer ring that takes up 20 millimeters. I have another spacer ring, copy and paste will be your, your friend on this one, takes up 15, another one that takes up 10, and I'm just gonna go ahead and continue filling this out. So here I have finished uh, adding all of my different little parts to the list. I put all of the M48 sized parts uh, on one list and the M42 size parts on the other. Now one of the things that I want to point out here is that the camera itself adds a certain amount of back focus. So if you look at the very front of your camera, there's like a little lens in front of it and the sensor is actually um, back a little bit from that, that little protective piece of glass. So each camera might have a little bit of a different amount of back focus that for the ASI 294 MC Pro camera that I use, um, that's going to add an extra 6.5 millimeters of back focus. So you can see in the table here that I have included the camera and the amount of space that it adds as well. Another thing worth noticing is that the camera itself has an M42 ring on it, but coming off of my um, reducer adapter ring, that's an M48. So somehow have to step down from an M48 to an M42. And this is why I have the two lists here so that I can figure out at what point do I want to step down from the 48s to the 42s. Now you could use a, an actual step down ring for this, but um, my uh, filter drawer actually already has an M48 on one side and an M42 on the other side. In fact, this little uh, inner ring is removable so I can go 48 to 48 or with that little step down ring installed from a 48 to a 42. So here uh, I get a two for one out of this. Not only is it the filter drawer but it's also a step down ring. So I need to make sure that I include that or some other kind of a step down device in there. At this point, now that you have all of your parts listed, um, you want to start checking the boxes for the parts you know you want to include. So I know that I obviously need to include the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and check that. And look what happens here. It says that as soon as I check this, it says that my the total amount of back focus I've added so far is 6.5 millimeters. My target is 105. So if I subtract those out, it tells me that I need to come up with an extra 98.5 millimeters worth of space. What other parts do I want to add? I want to also include the camera rotator so that I can change my framing if I want to. I also want to include my filter drawer, so I'm going to go ahead and check that one as well. I have to have my SCT to M48 adapter or none of the parts will, will attach to the telescope, so I'm going to include that also. So with all of the accessories that I want to include, I can easily see that I'm up to 40.5 millimeters of back focus 
and I have to come up with an additional 64 millimeters. So at this point, what you can do is you can just start um, adding some spacer rings and things to see if you can fill up that extra space. I got to get uh, 64, so let's put in a 20 millimeter M42. I'm down to uh, 44 is left, so I could put in an, another 20 millimeter M48. This is going to get me down to uh, 24 millimeters remaining. Uh, let's go ahead and take out 15 of it. I'm down to 9.5. And then if I add an extra 10 here, that's gonna put me um, over by just half a millimeter. Now that's not too bad. I find that with my telescope, I can be plus or minus a couple of millimeters and it's really not gonna make that big of a difference. With your telescope and, and the accessories that you're using, it might be significant and you might need to get as close to zero as, as possible. Uh, but here being within half a millimeter, that's, that's gonna be just fine for my needs. So there you go. I hope this tool helps you out. Uh, it, it really makes it easy to at a glance, see how much space you have left. And with all of your parts listed in front of you, you can just pick and choose just by checking the boxes. And it tells you if you've gone over or under. Um, it helps after a while of looking at all the different combinations, my head really started to spin. And I, even though it's just simple addition, um, I, I started making dumb mistakes just because I had too many parts on the brain. So. Um, hopefully this will uh, organize you a little bit and, and help you out. If this video was uh, useful to you, please uh, consider subscribing. Also, please consider leaving me a comment. It was one of your comments that led to the making of this video. So this channel is all about learning new things. We've been talking about astrophotography for a while because it's, uh, it's, it's just a fun thing. I really like it. I like talking about it. And you guys are the only ones who listen to me. So. Um, I, I hope it's I hope it's useful. Uh, I just got a whole pile of brand new computer parts. I'm going to be building a new computer in the next episode. So if you've ever wanted to build your own computer or just cur curious about how the process works, I'm going to be walking you through all of that. So yeah, never stop learning and we'll catch you on the next episode.